just start everyone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good morning. Say good morning to everybody here at the sanctuary this morning. Everyone that might be tuning in on Zoom or Facebook this morning for our Sunday school. Our Sunday school will begin. Let us stand. Can somebody lead us in silent night this morning? You don't mind since we're coming up to the Christmas season. Silent night. Silent
God that hopes you will read it if you want. Now with that, I'm going to read in my book, you know, reads a little, maybe a little bit different from the King James Version. But it's, it says, there was a feast of dedication in Jerusalem, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then the Jews surrounded him and said to him, how long do you keep us in doubt? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you do not believe because you are not of my sheep. As I said to you, my sheep hear my voice and know them, and, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. But Jesus was entering into the Feast of Dedication, and, and, and that was one of the ceremonies that the Jews practiced, and that these Jews or these Pharisees or who were devout Jews approached him and said, and, and look at the question they asked, how long do you keep us in doubt? Okay, they were wanting to know if you are the Christ, tell us plainly. You know, it's one thing about these Jews now, these, these, these Pharisees, Sadducees, these devout Jews, they weren't really looking for Jesus. No, it wasn't. No, no. They weren't really looking for him. He was nobody. Now, don't get me wrong, they wanted a, a king. They wanted a king to get them out of out from under Roman, Roman rule. But they didn't really want Jesus to be their king. They weren't really looking for Jesus. See what I'm talking about? And so when they asked that, they, they doubted, even though Jesus was performing all these miracles. They had heard about all these miracles he was performing, too. But they still doubted, didn't they? That he was the Savior. And, 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 and I, 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 I go into this portion of doubt this morning for this very reason right here. Let us be careful what we see Jesus for. All right. Like I told you, these Jews were seeking him, but they weren't seeking him for the right reason. They weren't seeking him to follow him. They weren't seeking him to be servants of the kingdom. But be careful, church, what we seek Jesus for. Let me, let me give you a full example of what we seek Jesus for sometimes. Sometimes we seek Jesus merely for a title. I want to be a preacher. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a reverend. Okay? Sometimes we seek Jesus for financial gain. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Be very careful, church, what we seek Jesus for. Mm -hmm. All right? Because right. everybody don't seek Jesus for the same reason. Mm -hmm. Make sure we seek Jesus for the purpose of being a servant and a follower of Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay? Where we can be a light to bring someone out of darkness to salvation. Mm -hmm. Make sure that we seek Jesus for the right reason. Sometimes when we see Jesus for the wrong reason, that's why this doubt comes about. Okay? Well, our faith isn't strong. Remember, you want to say something? Say your hand. Come on. I, I was thinking about something. Time had a reason why he was seeking to see Jesus. Okay. okay. He, he had no idea. He didn't have money to get home. And his heart couldn't be healed. All right. He was missing something. Right. A, a lot of our hearts are missing something. Uh, I talked about doubt uh, earlier. 
But I want to add one thing to that. Um, doubt and prayer. Okay? Doubt and prayer. You know, two things exist at the same time. They can't get it. No possible way. No. When we pray for something, we have to have faith and belief that God is able. Okay? When we take it to him in prayer, church, we're going to believe it. We're going to take a look at uh, Zacharias this morning. He's been praying for a long time, but I ain't going to get into it just yet. He's been praying for a long time. But you know one thing I'm saying, I, I probably I'm saying more, one more and one probably is this. God is able. He just don't come when we want him. That's right. Amen. He comes when he gets ready. Okay? He's able. Okay, let's get into our lesson. Uh, our lesson starts with um, let me get over there. It's in the book of Luke, the first chapter. And we know we're headed for the Christmas season. I know our lesson is going to be building up to the birth of Christ. And uh, we know this lesson this morning is a fourth chapter of the birth of Christ that is coming later on in this month. Okay, our lesson starts in the uh, book of, the first chapter of Luke is 8th through the 20th verse. But I'm going to bag you up a little bit for a minute. We're going to start about the fifth verse, if you'll allow it. We're going to start about the fifth verse. Question coming before we get to the lesson. I like the way um, your, your Sunday school book had it laid out. It talked about duty. It had three courses, three, three outlines of the lesson. It talked about duty. It talked about destiny. And then it talked about doubt. Okay? Duty, destiny, and doubt. I, I, I kind of like those three words the way, they, the way it separated it out. Pick up with the fifth verse. Start somebody. I'm gonna start here with the verse. Read. Read along with it. He said, That was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the division of Elijah. His wife was of the daughters of Abel, and her name was Elizabeth. So you know he had two people that both of them come from the priesthood, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Of the Jewish lineage, didn't he? Both of them was coming from one from, from Abijah and the other one coming, which was the Levi, and the other one coming from Abel. And we know that they were married together, uh, Zacharias and Elizabeth. Yeah. And the sixth verse says, and they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. Mm -hmm. So we have two people, origins, comes from the faith, the Jewish faith, and they're walking in righteousness, ain't they? Mm -hmm. They try to do everything the way God wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Everything. You know, church. Sometimes, I, I, I get to read that next verse, but sometimes, church, you can, we can do everything possible mm -hmm. that we think we're doing right. Mm -hmm. But still, things don't, don't seem to line up the way we want to do it. Mm -hmm. they, they don't seem to line up the way we want to. Seventh verse says, but they had no child because Elizabeth was barren, and they were both well advanced in years. Somebody tell me what was, how a woman was considered if she didn't have children back in those days. Cursed. Huh? Cursed. She could have cursed. Outcast. An outcast. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Shane. Mm -hmm. Sean. Yep. Embarrassed. Okay. Just because you couldn't have a child. Mm -hmm. You know, I guess the Jews looked at it as if God had cursed you because you were unable to produce the fruit of the womb, okay? And, and, and that made them feel like an outcast, didn't it? It made them feel different from all the other ladies. Could you imagine all the ladies that probably paraded around that had even more than one child? Mm -hmm. And you don't have any? Mm -hmm. Someone might have six, eight, ten. I think my grandmother had 13. Mm -hmm. 13 children. And, and this, this lady just wanted one. She just wanted one. She just wanted one. Okay, question comes. We're fixing to get into the lesson. The first outline of the lesson was about duty. Okay, A verse says, So it was that while he was serving as a priest, let me read from this. And the King James Version. And it came to pass that while he executed.
executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course. According to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of the incense. Okay, 8 through 11 verses. Now, let's talk for a minute about Zacharias. Let's talk about Zacharias for a minute. I'm, I'm, I'm gathering from what I read. The burning of the incense was a wonderful thing. It was nothing to be taken lightly. It was an important task for the priest, right? It was something that even may have only happened one time in your lifetime. Could you imagine? I'm trying to paint a picture of Zachariah. Could you imagine Zachariah knowing that his time to burn the incense in the temple? He probably was a little uh, excited. He probably was a little bit nervous. He probably thought about it that day before it even happened, didn't he? Mm -hmm. I can see Zacharias. Man, this is a one in a lifetime. Right. Walk if you got a chance to do something once in your lifetime. Okay? Just once that you don't get a chance to do this in your lifetime. Okay? You probably get all nervous. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You probably get excited at the same time. Don't you? And I can see Zacharias the day before he even planned. Maybe I want to wear my best robe when I go to do this. You know, I'm, I'm just trying to paint a picture of Zacharias this morning. You know, maybe I want to, maybe I want to uh, wear my best pair of shoes this morning when I, when I go to do this. Yeah. Just to burn this incense. Okay? I'm painting a picture of Zacharias. Now, we're gonna, in, a, in a minute, we're going to take a look at it. We're going to go over and take a look at uh, this uh, incense burning for a minute. Exodus 30, chapter 1 through 10. Let's head that way. Exodus 30, chapter 1 through 10. While we're getting out, this was counted as an a honor or a privilege. Mm -hmm. As an honor or a privilege to, to be chosen just to burn this incense. Exodus 31 through 10. Have we made it there? Exodus 31 through 10. I'm going to read it right quick. Just listen. Just listen to how important this was. You shall make an altar to burn incense on. You shall make it of acacia wood. A cubit shall be its length and a cubit its width. And it shall be square. And two cubits shall be its height. Its horn shall be of one piece with it. And you shall overlay its top, its sides all around, and its horn with pure gold. And you shall make for it a molding of gold all around. Two gold rings you shall make for it under the molding on both, both its sides. You shall place them on its two sides, which to bear it, I mean, excuse me, on two sides, and they will be holders for the poles with which to bear it. You shall make the poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. And you shall put it before the veil that is before the ark of the testimony, before the mercy seat that is over the testimony, where I will meet with you. Aaron shall burn on it sweet incense every morning, when he tends the lamps, he shall burn incense on it. And when Aaron lights the lamps at twilight, he shall burn incense on it. A perpetual incense before the Lord throughout your generations. You shall not offer strange incense on it, or a burnt offering, or a meal offering, nor shall you pour a drink offering on it. And Aaron shall make atonement upon his horns once a year with the blood of the sin offerings of atonement. Once a year he shall make atonement upon it throughout your generations. It is most holy to the Lord. So this wasn't just no ordinary table in that way. This was a very sanctified table. I mean, it was dedicated to God. Wasn't it? And they burned incense on it. This was a big thing, church. This wasn't no small occasion. And Abel, like I said, Zechariah probably got once in a lifetime in order to go in and burn this incense. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm painting a picture of Zechariah because he's probably nervous and he's probably kind of tense about this situation because to go before God and something ain't right in your life right. could mean sudden death. Right. Hmm? To go before God and something ain't right in your life could mean sudden death. So, what do you think about us, church? What do you think about when we come before God? 
What do you think about when we bow down? Hmm? What do you think? What do you think, Walt? Sometimes do everything be right with us? No. No. No, no. 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 Church, we need to clean some things up. Let us quit coming and prostrating ourselves right. before God and things ain't right in our lives. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. Jesus covers a multitude of faults. But church, that don't mean we just go out and keep sinning. Right. Right. Okay? Clean yourself up. Aaron, I mean, uh, Zachariah said, clean himself up to go before and, and execute this priestly duty. Okay, I said it was a privilege. Now, let's take a look at the 10th verse. It says, and the whole multitude of people were praying without at the time of incense. Can't you see Zachariah burning incense on the inside and praying, and the multitude of people are doing what? Praying on the outside. Praying on the outside. Do we pray when others pray? Supposed to. Hmm? Supposed to. Do we? Or do we listen to what they're they saying up there? <laughs> I'm just asking questions. Everybody looking at me funny. Like, why are you asking up there? Hey, I'm going to be giving out of my head. Yeah. Sometimes we do pray other prayers while people are praying, don't we? Yeah, and sometimes we are participants. We listen, don't we? Okay. And in prayer. Church, what I'm trying to get us to see, Reverend Stone, he can't pray you into heaven. That's right. And he can't pray you out of heaven. Okay? We have to pray unto God. We need a personal relationship with right? God. We need a personal relationship with him. Zachariah was praying on the inside, and the multitude were praying on the outside, but everybody was praying. Everybody was praying unto God. Okay, all this is going on. All this is going on. Let me get back to the lesson now. Excuse me. And they appeared unto him an angel. Okay? So Zechariah has already got all this stuff going on. He's tense. He wants to make sure everything is all right. And he, he maybe, like I said, he put on his best clothes, his best shoes to get in order to execute this, this duty. But an angel appears. Okay? An angel appears. he got all this going on. He looks up, and there's somebody in there beside him. Mm -hmm. You don't know who it is. You don't know what they are for. But somebody has showed up beside Zacharias. Okay? This, this, the topic of this, of this portion of the lesson was duty. Church, we all have duties. We all have things that God wants us to fulfill. Okay? Zacharias is faithful. In fulfilling his duty as a priest, what? Mm -hmm. We have to be faithful unto God, church, to fulfill our duty mm -hmm. as servants of God. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. Everybody has a purpose. God didn't put you here without a purpose. Mm -hmm. Find your purpose. Mm -hmm. Execute your purpose. Mm -hmm. That's what Zechariah was doing this morning, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. He was executing his purpose in the temple. Okay? That's what he was doing. That's what, that's, that's, that's what we have to do. We have to execute our purpose. Okay. Now, I, I missed one thing I, I, I meant to say while we was talking about how wonderful the table was what they burned the incense on. God don't run with a second hand. All right. Okay? Mm -hmm. Everything God does is wonderful. Amen. Okay? If everything God does is wonderful, what about this temple right here? Mm -hmm. If this temple is wonderful and great, what about our temple? Mm -hmm. You think God going to buy it with all kind of mess, all kind of junk going on, mm -hmm. all kind of lies, all kind of deceitfulness, all kind of backstabbing, Balance, all the different things you do. You think God can be a part of it? No. Oh, His Holy Spirit is not going to reside with that, is it? No. No. So just like His temple is magnificent, God expects us to display our temple with some magnificence, okay? Mm -hmm. Same way. Same way. Execute your duty, church. Execute your duty. Whatever your God has for you to do, do it. Do it faithfully. Do it without mumbling and grumbling. Do it.
to the best of your ability. Your duty. That's your duty. Question and comments on this section before we move on. Nobody. Okay. Let's move on to uh, our next section. The 12th through the 16th verses. Mm -hmm. This is the part that talks about destiny. I missed something. I missed something. Just came up that I thought about before, before I passed over. Zachary White, we talked about her being barren, right? Mm -hmm. There were many other women in the Bible that were barren, wasn't there? Many. Can I anybody name a few? Rachel. Rachel. Who else? Sarah. 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 Wait a minute, going a little bad. I say, I slow down and say right now. Somebody, somebody want to hear this this morning. Come on, you missed another one. We had Rachel. Sarah. Okay, wait a minute. Now. One person. One person. Come on. Rachel, who else? Hannah. Hannah. Sarah. 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 Somebody else say something? And uh, the mother of Samson. Okay. Okay, yes. Yes. Thank Samuel. Uh, we will say that. Okay. Yeah. Um, but every, what, I, what, what the reason why I want to name those, have you noticed that every time one of them was there, God was here to show up mm -hmm. and make something miraculously happen? Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every time one is mentioned in the Bible, mm -hmm. God shows up and makes something miraculously happen. Mm -hmm. Okay? That just lets us know that God still has miracles today, church. He does. He still has the ability to produce miracles today. So don't let don't let, don't let us give up on God. That's right. Because He ain't gonna give up on us. That's right. You gonna see that? You gonna see that in the, in the lesson in a few minutes. He is not gonna give up on us. All right. Talking about destiny, twelve through sixteen. Let's read. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zechariah. For thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Okay, let's, let's talk about that before we move to the 14th and 16th. So I, I said, Zachariah, all of a sudden he's in here and he's executing his duty, and somebody else shows up. And Zachariah don't know who it is. I would have scared us too, wouldn't it? So you know, natural fear just took over. Because I told you that Zacharias is thinking from the jump. If I enter into the presence of God and, and, and something ain't right, that could mean instant death for me. So all of a sudden there's an angel there. And Zacharias is scared. So the angel speaks and tells him to fear not, Zacharias. For thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and I shall call his name John. The prayer that the two of them have been praying, and they don't say how long, but Zacharias and Elizabeth now are well in their age. They haven't grown old. They grew, they're, they're elders now. Okay? And they, they've been praying for years for this child. And all of a sudden, this angel shows up and says, uh, uh, For thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and call his name John. And this is good news, isn't it? Somebody find Galatians 6 and 9. While, <laughs> while we're still talking about good news. That's my thing, Bert. Galatians 6 and 9. Somebody read it for me. Blessed, don't 
Zachariah had no idea who John was going to be. He had no idea John was going to be the forerunner of Christ. He, know, he had no idea one of the greatest men outside of Christ himself. Mm -hmm. Huh? But Zachariah, look at Zachariah, he went from no child to praying for a child mm -hmm. to figuring you wasn't going to get a child to getting one of the greatest right. outside of Jesus. That's right. Okay? So sometimes, church, we just have to be patient mm -hmm. and wait on God. Question comments along that. Do you ever notice that when the in scripture, when the angels appear to different people, one of the first things they always say is, fear not. Fear not. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, they be scared. Say it again, Sister Chapman. I said, yeah, I thought they be scared. They be scared, huh? <laughs> hey, you, if you was at your house and all of a sudden a, a person appeared there, you know, ain't nobody came to the door. I'm right around here. I'm right around here. Full of fear, you too, huh? Fear not. Thank you. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But we wanted yesterday. Mm -hmm. We pray. We think we get up off our knees. We all be coming to the front door. Mm -hmm. But when God comes, mm -hmm. oh yeah, mm -hmm. His promise comes true. His promise comes true. You're right. Anybody else? Where's it coming? Four, five years or longer, but it's coming. Yeah. It's coming. Yeah. It's coming. Yeah. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah. It's coming. Yeah. It's coming. Yeah. If it is his will. If it's his will. You're right. You're right, brother. You're right, brother. Mm -hmm. I thought about that same thing. If it's his will. Mm -hmm. We pray for something that God don't want to have. That's right. All right. All right. right. All right. Well, you fool like you and me. Now you can pray. <laughs> 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 Anybody else? 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 Anybody Something he wants us to do probably. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
okay? It ain't nothing but spread the word to somebody. Talk to somebody. Help somebody along the way. God has a purpose for us every day. Amen. Has a purpose for us every day. So we see it. Uh, and it says on the 16th verse, that many of the children of Israel shall return to the Lord their God. And we know that John was in the wilderness preaching, wasn't he? And he was preaching repentance, wasn't he? To turn and come back to God. And a lot of the Israelites turned and came back to God. And he was preaching not only for, for them to repent, but also preparing the way for Jesus, wasn't he? Preparing the way for Jesus. And I think the Bible says he was making the crooked places straight. So he was, he was going about getting things in order for people to receive our Savior. You know, a lot of times what we call too late is right on time. I think Sister God said something to that, to that fact. A lot of times in life, we give up. We said, we prayed about that thing. We're going to leave it alone. We're going to leave it in God's hand. We ain't going to pray about it no more. We do it. A lot of times, that's when we start to doubt that God can't do what God says he can do. Nowhere in the Bible do he tell us to just quit praying, though. Pray with our sleep. Pray with us. So if there's something out there, church, that you need to pray about, continue to pray about it. Really? Continue to keep the faith. Continue to walk in the light of God, okay? Because he can do it. He's able to do it. Question comments along that section. That's the destiny. That's the destiny of uh, Zacharias. God was going to bless him. He's going to give him a son. His name is going to be John. God's destiny can't be changed, sir. That, that's his will. God's will cannot be changed. Whatever it is, it's going to come true. Whether it be good, whether it be bad, God's will is going to go forward. Question coming, Is about As humans, we have a real bad habit of if we can't be number one, then we can't be you. We can't do for God because we measuring what we do for God by human standards. Mm -hmm. And so, um, if if a child is not, you know, I hate to say it, if your child is not the preacher in the church, or uh, the head deacon or the head whatever, then people, you know, kind of look down on you and everything. But the thing is. Um, we got to be okay with not being number one all the time. All right. Because if we're going to work in the body of Christ, you know, you got to be able to work together and you got to be able to support everybody else that's working for Christ. Amen. And too many times we give up on God because he didn't give us a certain position or we hadn't been heard in a certain way. And so when you can humble yourself and fall back <coughs> and just let God be God, then you can do more for him. Right. Right. Amen. Anybody else? Question coming. Well, we are the same. Like That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. But, yeah. but we don't see it. We don't. We don't see it. Tell yeah. me, and, and furthermore, and for being that number one, number 2,337 is the all right with God. All right. As long as you do it, it's weird. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm saying. But yeah. We don't, we don't see it. He ain't got to be number one. Anybody have a question coming? We're going to move on a little bit further. Our last outline deals with, we deal with uh, destiny. No, that wasn't perfect. Duty. Mm -hmm. Destiny. And now the last outline, we're going to yeah. deal with doubt. Zacharias said it was faithful in, 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 in executing his duty. And he was destined to be blessed by God. But then we're going to look at what we're all susceptible to. Doubt. Mm -hmm. Doubt. It says, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power in the 17th verse. 
and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias, which is Elijah, mm -hmm. to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Mm -hmm. And it says that John will be one of those that not afraid to speak. Mm -hmm. I'm going to sum that verse up for you. He'll speak boldly. Mm -hmm. He won't be afraid of what are the consequences that come behind speaking. He'll tell you what's right and what's wrong. You know, a lot of times we want to tell people what's right, but we want to get along with folks. Well, I don't think so because, uh, you know, uh, 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 well, no, just tell them what's right. Tell them what thus says the Lord and let it fall where it falls. That's what John was going to be when he when he declared the gospel. He was going to be, he was going to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, disobedient of the wisdom of the just. Um, he says to prepare God's people. 18 verse says, and Zechariah said unto the angel, and Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. That word. Angel appears, say you're going to have a son, and you're going to name him John. He's going to be one that carries the word of God. He's going to be one that don't mind boldly speaking. But I'm old. <laughs> My wife is old. How is this going to be? You've seen this down before, haven't you? Oh, yeah. Seen the neighbor having it in Sarah, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Seen it before, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Doubt, 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 doubt. Doubt and faith can't they practice together. Mm -hmm. 19 verse says, And the angel asked and said unto him, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God, and am sent to speak unto thee, and to show thee, the, show thee these glad tidings. Mm. So Zachariah, you may die, but I am Gabriel. I stand for, I am the presence of God speaking to you. And God can do anything. You may be old, Zachariah. Your wife may be well stricken in years. Her womb may be barren. But God can do anything he wants to do whenever he wants to do it. Whenever he wants to do it. 21st says, and behold, Thou shalt be dumb. Wait a minute. Before I go to the 20th verse, I got something. Isaiah 55 and 11. Somebody look it up right quick. Isaiah 55 and 11. So when God's word go forward, he said, don't come back out. Boy, it won't come back, boy. He's going to accomplish what he sent it to accomplish. Okay? Just to keep that in mind, sir. God will, and his word is going to be done. When he goes out, he don't care what it takes to accomplish it. It's going to get accomplished. If God got a blessing for you, church, you go get it. That's going to be cold. If God got punishment for you, church, you go get it. God's word don't come back for it. It's going to accomplish whatever it sets out to accomplish. Okay? All right. Isaiah 55 and 11. 20 verse says, And behold, thou shalt be dumb, and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed. Because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. And we know Zechariah was made when he didn't speak, did he? Mm -hmm. He came out of the temple, he came out of the great rich people, and he couldn't say a word, did he? Mm -hmm. And all the people marveled at it, didn't he? Mm -hmm. They didn't know what had happened. 
Because Zechariah went into the temple. He was able to communicate. And he comes out and he can't say anything. Church, there's a penalty for doubt. There's a penalty for us doubting God. Okay? Let us be faithful. Let us be always reminded that God can deliver us. Don't let our faith grow. All right. Question coming about this. Question coming. Connected. And, some, and put some emphasis on some words this morning. Now unto him that is able to do what? That is able to do exceedingly, exceedingly abundantly, abundantly above all above that we all. ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. <laughs> Come on, see. Let's <laughs> raise our I ain't even saying nothing about it. It speaks for itself. It speaks for itself, church. <laughs> Come on, raise the offer. Let's go. All is able to do exceedingly.
God's able to do just what He says. He is able. He is able. Question, comments, anybody before we close out our lesson this morning? Come on. I want to say something. We all got issues. Okay. Yeah, Amen. Well, but we know it. Amen. Okay. 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 And uh, I thought about the woman with the issue of bullying. Okay. Mm -hmm. She she been sick for twelve years. Mm -hmm. And one day she heard it, <laughs> and Jesus passed by. All right. All right. All right. And, 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 uh, I thought about it when I was sick, okay, so a few weeks ago, okay. I, 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 I started to call the church. Say, y'all pray for me, church, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. And, 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 and something told me everybody got hit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, I said, I got an issue like the woman. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when she heard Jesus was praying to me, if I could just took the hymn mm -hmm. of his God, I'd be made whole. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that to say it is. Mm -hmm. I went to the largest room in the afternoon. I didn't say you got to try out the game. <laughs> <laughs> I still wasn't getting no better with the mountains. And then I went to Amber. They all went and find out. And after I thought about the woman with the Asian bullet, I read to the hand. All right. <laughs> And I'm here today. Amen. All right. Amen. 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 I still got the wool of her. Okay. But it ain't giving me that. Okay. Right. I just want to let the church know it. Amen. 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 It's all right, Walt. Amen. Amen. Anybody else before we close out? You still got a little time. <laughs> I don't want to share a thing with you. Don't take it home with you now. Then get back home, so I still say it's all while I was out there. Deacon James, tell us about your Sunday school um, publishing board. Okay, yeah, I, I was going to mention that before I close out. Uh, we bring you greetings from the, our Sunday school publishing board convention in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, Pastor Stone and Sister Laverne and myself, we attended. It was great. Amen. I have never been in a stadium quite like that. It was kind of like a convention, but it was more narrow to your Sunday school. And um, some of the preaching there was dynamic. Amen. It was dynamic. We had three worship services at, from 10 to 12 each day. They were, as the young people say, off the chain. <laughs> These speakers were dynamic speakers. And it's one thing, if I don't take anything away from our Sunday school convention, I'm going to let, let the church know this. We have got to get back to our classrooms. The ones that are suffering are our children. Think about this. It's been four years now since our, teachers, since our children have been in Sunday school class. But we have got to get back to our class. Because just like our instructor told us, it was Sunday school with that. Look around. Everybody just take a look around. We have about three or four kids in there. Mm -hmm. When we leave and we die off the scene, mm -hmm. your Sunday school will die. But I think, now this is my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, when Reverend R. died, it affected them children. That's my opinion. Yes, it is. Because any good out of them. Now that's my opinion. That is my opinion. Now we had plenty of children. Yeah. Uh, come to Sunday school. And the virus came and everything. Right, right, right. Put the virus in there too. That, yeah. That is gone. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. But the power was yeah. responsible for that. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Let me say this power. Mm -hmm. Come on. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
again, let me, and I, I, I was again during the regular worship service, just want to thank New Hebrew for yes. being the kind of church that allowed us to go. Amen. Uh, I didn't know, I knew I needed it, but didn't know how bad I needed it until after I had gotten here. Uh, whatever the cause of the decline, here's, the, here's where the responsibility lies. Mm -hmm. We can't put it on paint. We can always point the finger. But, but my job is, what are we going to do as New Hebron to do all that we can to rebuild and build back better our children and youth Sunday school? Because again, we know what one of our issues is, and that's a, that's a gap between generations. Again, you can just point out, when you look at the room right now, solid, strong Christians, but again, I hate to tell everybody, just in case you didn't know, ain't none of us going to be here all the time. We're we going to check out of here. And if we don't take the responsibility to do all that we can to build up this generation that's coming behind us, it's going to be our fault. And I don't want to get to heaven. And God said, what happened under your leadership with Sunday School, Reverend Stone? Well, the pandemic. Now, I ain't asking you about the pandemic. What did you intentionally do? And so uh, we got a great uh, superintendent, uh, James. I know he's fired up. Uh, from the burn fired up, and again, we're going to make plans to go every year as long as I'm here, as long as they're doing it to, to build up our leader. But there's some things we can do. And under the leadership of our superintendent, uh, working with me and others, we're going to put some things in place. And I'm going to go and tell you now that the first Sunday in January is going to be Dean back to Sunday school. So every Sunday, you're going to hear me saying it's back to Sunday school. So, but what has to happen is it just can't come from me. Right. Can't just come from me. Y'all know more people than I know at New Hebrew. So y'all need to get on your phone and, and text it and let people know we want to see your babies, your grandchildren back at Sunday School. Children's Church, all, first Sunday in January, is on and popular. We're going to be full-fledged back to Sunday School. So you'll be hearing it from the pulpit. It'll be on Facebook. It'll be everywhere I can put it to let everybody know that at New Hebrew, first Sunday in January, is going to be deemed back to Sunday School. Young adults, if you in that age range from 18 to 45, got to step your game up. Mm -hmm. right. Got to step your game up. We, we need some more Miss Gardner. We need some more Miss King. We need some more uh, Sister Chandler, Sister Bassett. And all I, that's all I can tell you. If you're in that age range from 18 to about 45, step your game up. What that means is it's going to cause you some sacrifice of your time. Yeah. I'm mad. Well, let me see. We're gonna, let me go ahead, I, I, I get fired up and excited, but first Sunday in January is back to Sunday school. All right. Back to Sunday school. All right, now. So teachers, teachers, those students that you had, it's been four years, they probably moved on to other classes by now. But those that you have, that you had in your class, you know how our progression goes. Pass those names and those numbers on to the next teachers in line, okay? We get to call in some people. We got a month's time, and we're gonna open my classroom back up. And I don't care if you got one student in there. We're gonna teach that one student to some more shit. When we get two, we're gonna wait for three, and we're gonna get started. All right? Okay. All right. Let us close. Anybody? Question or comments? Anybody? Sister Byrne, did you have anything you want to add? Okay. <laughs> Uh, if there are no more questions coming, we'll say have prayer and then we'll close our Sunday school night. Let's bow our heads. This morning, this most heavenly divine Father, we come to say thank you, Father. We come to give praise and worship to your holy name. We thank you for being God and being God all by yourself. We thank you for your son, Jesus, that you gave to die on the cross so we might have an opportunity for eternal salvation. Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit, rest room, and abide with us as we go on this Christian journey. Thank you, Father, for your word, that it be a light unto our, a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path, Father. Guide us and keep us, and Father, we'll be, make us better servants for your kingdom, Father. That's all we want to be as a servant. Father, guide us and keep us and make us what you have us to be. In the strong and mighty name of Jesus, we ask God and we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.